Pride of Detroit POD cast as we now talk about the picks from day three. Yes, day three now. We've made it all the way down here, Jeremy, as we go to the ninth pick in the sixth round. Six, nine. Nice. Technically 188. Nice. This was um, this was a trade down, actually. So the Ryans actually traded down. Uh, Lions, excuse me, not Ryans. Traded down, picked from 181 and picked up 237, which means we have three guys to talk about now in this segment instead of just two. A, a, and a, they pick- a very unpopular trade down in the media room, I should, I should mention. <laughs> <laughs> if you guys are having opinions about trading down seven spots from one in the one eight hundreds, like you have, like uh, you're, you're just, Chris. I can't, I can't make accusations against you. That would be, be sanitized for this podcast. Chris, you are, you are a pro worker. You're a pro laborer. You should, you should be siding with Jeremy's argument. We could have been, this, they're, they're PMC. Well, we could have been done at 217. We could have been done at 217 at the bottom of the six and kicked up PMC. our feet for the entire seventh round. That's, that's, you're not doing real work. Wow. <laughs> oh, wow. Neither am I for that matter. Well, that part I agree with. Yes. Uh, Malcolm Rod- <laughs> Stop it. Malcolm Rodriguez, linebacker out of Oklahoma State. Um, this was disappointing, if only because I knew more people from Oklahoma I could talk to. If we had picked like an OU player, Oklahoma State, I am tapped out. So, although, didn't I think the Lions did take a Cowboy last year, though. I don't was, remember. Uh, Derek Barnes was? No, Purdue. No, that's right. You're thinking of Barry Sanders. I am not thinking of Barry Sanders. <laughs> you're th- oh, you're thinking of Brandon Pettigrew. I'm not thinking of Brandon <laughs> Pettigrew. Do not do this to my addled brain, especially this late in here and this late in the afternoon. Um, yeah, so Malcolm Rodriguez, he was uh, did not meet with the media. He had a family engagement. But Jeremy Lyons finally get around to addressing linebacker. It just happens to be on day three. Yeah, uh, an interesting guy. Uh, so a, a converted safety. And if you watch the tape, that's plainly obvious because he's a really good coverage guy. Um, there's a there's a highlight that I think Todd McShay threw on Twitter uh, a month or two back of him just like completely blanketing. I think it was a wheel route and just, you know, completely just blanketing the guy and and closing speed and all like he's really got everything that that a good safety has outside of a ton of range. I th- the, the way that Oklahoma State used him a lot was very close to the line of scrimmage Um he would cover the the running backs out of out of the backfield. He would cover tight ends. He blitzed a hell of a lot, and and I think his coverage is just is just very solid. Tackling was also very very solid. The concern though is size with him because he's small and like Nicobe Dean's small. And I know Nicobe Dean is, is is a lot of people thought he was a, a really good prospect, and and there were other reasons he fell in the draft. Um, but he's even smaller than than N'Kobe Dean, especially when it comes to to arm length, a thing that the Lions clearly don't care about, um, which is fine. But to me, unlike some of the other guys that have short arms, it really showed up on the tape when I was watching him because he can't disengage all that well. He's not a great run defender. Um, to me, I think his, I think his ceiling is is really like a third down specialty guy where he can come in and maybe be almost like a nickel corner or or just like an extra linebacker or whatever where you can send him on blitzes you can have him cover a, a tight end or a running back out of, out of the backfield but I don't see him having that much of a ceiling elsewhere because he's just he's too small he's not strong enough maybe if he can bulk up a little bit um he has okay hand usage but in general it's just it's too much for him he, he he, he wasn't that much of an impact run defender, even though he had all the tackles that he did, like crazy amount of tackles uh, at, at, at Oklahoma state, but tackles are kind of a, one of those stats where it's, it's not necessarily a good thing. It's, it's, it's not necessarily, I guess, uh, a bad a good, thing it, either. Yeah. It's not a bad thing, but it's not an indicator of, of good play necessarily. Um, again, I think he's a solid tackler, but just not, not a great run defender. And I, I, I don't know. I, I'm maybe I'm lower on him than, than most, but we are we are talking about a sixth round pick here. I, I don't see him as a potential starter at this position down the road. I don't think so either. But I think 
what's important to keep in mind is what you said, Jeremy. This is a six round pick, pick 188 overall. Like the the thing I like about <clears throat> Rodriguez is like he seems like a very high upside special teams player. Yes. Right. Hundred percent. Like like just seems like <clears throat> seems like he would be an absolute perfect fit as a gunner. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh the the thing I liked about him in the Beast, uh Dane Brugler's draft guide, two time state champion wrestler. Yeah. Finished with a thirty and three record. Strong. strong dude. Yeah. Like he's a strong yeah, I'm, a strong I'm, guy. And played 538 career snaps on special teams at Oklahoma state. Like I, I, two things are getting, I think like Jeremy saying as a ceiling, I think that he's a sub package guy. Yeah. Come in, come in and do something special on third down. Right. Or he's just cleaning up, cleaning up everything on special teams. And at pick 188, I love it. I'm not allowed to talk about it. Uh, Rodriguez. You mentioned former wrestler. Like after Anthony Zettel, I'm not allowed to talk about any guy, <laughs> any prospect that has wrestling in their background. I just, I get, I get too gassed out up about it. I'm pretty sure I said on, no way I, I'm wasn't on draft day, but like, I'm pretty sure like I looked at this and I'm just like, Oh my God, just show me the wrestling highlights. So, the, I mean, the, the other thing to mention too, is just like, he's also a tremendous athlete, which is a, an ongoing theme that, that we haven't really right. talked too and much I, about in this entire class. Like, all-time Raz draft for, for the Lions. And so where he wins at the college level is using that speed, using kind of the wrestling like leverage to, to get around blocks. But once, once someone has their hands on this dude, like he's not getting out of it. That's, that's the major problem. And I, and considering right. at the NFL level, athleticism is just at a higher level for everyone. Guards, tackles, all of them mm-hmm. are much more athletic. I just don't see him being able to succeed. In, in the we way are not. We are not typically talking starter material and the sixth round at this point. We are talking about taking flyers on guys or depth pieces, and I think that's kind of basically exactly where Rodriguez slots in. Um, the second, the other pick in the sixth round, and once again, kind of an edge linebacker safety. And this one's really curious because I'm really curious how the lions are going to play him and maybe they tip their hand in some of the highlight reel they showed, which also pissed off Deion Sanders. But um, James Houston uh, transfer from Florida to Jackson state. This is Deion Sanders, you know, as everyone I'm sure knows, as he keeps saying, Deion Sanders is the coach of Jackson state HBCU um, really blew up. He was like all team swack. I believe like he had like 16 and a half sacks, uh, however, he was at Jackson State, he was an edge, but at Florida, he was an off ball linebacker. Once again, a huge athlete. It's a crowded room, especially with two other, you know, draftees coming in at the edge position. And I got to think if you're showing off mostly linebacker tape on the highlight reels, I'm, I don't know, maybe that's Lions say that's the only tape they were allowed to get permission to use at the time, but. Jeremy, I, I guess my big question is, and again, we're talking once again about a sixth rounder. You're hoping on upside at this point. So I guess I have two questions is a, where does he play and B how much of a contribution is he really adding? Cause his two options are either a very stacked room at edge or a very threadbare unit linebacker that is still fairly suffi- like deficient, but also, that's not that doesn't seem the position where he kind of made his uh, his bread. I, first off, I will say this is the most interesting pick they made all draft. I am it's very interesting. I am endlessly fascinated by this guy because if you watch some of the tape that he had last year, he was just an absolute game wrecker at Jackson State. Unbelievable! Like he yeah, is. I said it. Sixty and a half sacks, like annihilating, destroy- and like half of those seemed like they were forced fumbles. He is just destroying guys out there. Now, obviously, lower level of competition at an HBCU, but it's worth note- noting that he was at Florida. Like, they thought he was a good enough player to play at Florida. I don't know where they're going to play him, to be honest, Chris. I, I look at the tape that-, that he put last year, and I think they're just like, th- something's there as an edge rusher. I think that's where they're going to try because y- you want to talk about a speed edge. Like, that's kind of your speed edge rusher. I know I know. we talked about maybe that's not their, their flavor uh, that they like, but he brings something different and just I, uses his hands. Well, just, 
I don't it's really hard for me not to get excited about a guy like this and to pull myself back because it was a lower level of competition because he was just making offensive tackles look absolutely silly. And so, I don't know. I I don't that's where I think I would try him out just to see what the hell happens. But like you said, really good athlete, long arms. So, again, something that's a little bit different than some of the other guys they got. This guy's got some super long arms, 34 inch which is, you know, you, you want to compare him to someone else in this class. He's, he's got longer arms than Jermaine Johnson, uh, a popular guy, Ar- Arnold Ebichetti, longer than him as well. Uh, so, and, and, and I think the thing that was also really interesting, I, I watched the film at the East-West Shrine game. I watched the film at the NFLPA game. They played him at both, and he made an impact at both linebacker and edge. So maybe he's just this super versatile piece that you throw at both when you need an extra guy. I currently have him off the roster just because I feel like edge in particular is a new position to him, but I I would not be at all surprised if he just blows up training camp and, and works his way onto the roster. I don't know enough about this kid, but I'm excited to, to learn more about him. Um, and I guess to call him a kid is kind of disingenuous because like, he's a 98 baby. Like mm-hmm. he's, he's pretty old. Like he's, you know, uh, in terms of a draft prospect. So, uh, I, I'm, I'm just interested in, and that can be said about the lions next. I, I know, pick, but I final I know, one. Yeah. Yeah. Real, real quick though. You mentioned how old he is. I know that again, came up with my conversation with Kent was like, he's Kent's not really much of a fan of, uh, he, he, I know he likes the Houston pick, but some of the guys coming out from college when you're on kind of the older side is not great because you've already got quite a bit of tread on it and you've been looking for a prospect for a while it's it kind of goes against your favor but yes we do have another pick one more pick as i said lions pick up 237 that's cornerback dressing cornerback here chase lucas out of arizona state who is also 25 coming out of the draft he was a five-year starter but you know he got to work under both herm edwards and marvin lewis who are both nfl coaches herm edwards I don't even know if I want to call him an NFL coach because that was like back in the stone ages as far as we know. But yeah, Ryan, you had some thoughts on Chase Lucas. Yeah, I, I think you you look at a, a player like Chase Lucas and I, I think the first thing that jumps off the page is like another like very athletic guy, right? Like seems like a guy who has like twitchy speed, um, you know, played, I mean, various. The, the, the cool thing about Chase Lucas is like he played all over. Yeah. Um, in college at uh at arizona state like played safety we're talking safety here played played outside cornerback um i i I think i think that's what's interesting um you know i you i think you also know like the player you're getting um in terms of his ceiling because like you said i mean five-year starter at arizona state he's and he's a 97 baby so uh he's he's already 25 but um i i think like his versatility makes him an interesting prospect in terms of like, he can play inside, he can play outside. So that might give him a a leg up on the competition when it comes to training camp, Jeremy, because that cornerback room, that defensive back room is pretty crowded. And yeah. So, I mean, drafting a guy this late, you wonder, I mean, we had the same conversation about Jamar Jefferson a year ago, right? Like as we were in training camp, it was like, Hey, he's a guy who might be on the bubble. And a lot of people like threw their arms of like, he was a draft pick. Like that might happen in the seventh round. Yeah, no question. And that's okay. I think it's also worth pointing out. Like this team has no problem saying, you know, these late draft picks is these UDFA guys in our secondary, they can work their way under the roster. It happened last year all over the place. They got a ton of production from, from guys late in the draft. And And it's supposed to be a year with a lot of deep UDFA like talent from what I've been told as well. But I think it's also worth pointing out. I don't think this team's nickel corner is settled. Like I know we we were AJ, AJ Parker had a promising rookie year, but I don't think he is like the bona fide starter. I I think the lions are, are definitely still figuring that out. And like you said, that might be enough to get him a spot. Mike Hughes, you know, a free agent guy who, who's got in the same kind of inside outside versatility. The, the, the most interesting thing about this guy is you mentioned he's 25. That makes him the third oldest guy on the <laughs> roster wild. at cornerback on this roster. So you're just going to have a bunch of young guys battling it out in training camp. And, you know, with, with so much uncertainty with, with Jeff Okuda and, and, and Jerry Jacobs, 
I, I, I really think this cornerback position, while it has potential, it's still, still very much up in the air. And I couldn't tell you who their three starters are going to be right now. I, you know, it's going to be Amani Oruarie, and then who? Who's going to be the other outside corner? Who's going to be the other nickel corner? I, I don't know right now. And I know the lines very much live by the, the lifestyle of competition, competition, competition. Just build competition everywhere. And so we'll see who wins out of the competition because I, I don't I don't really have a favorite right now. I guess Jeff Okuda, considering he's posting videos of him changing direction and, and looking pretty fast right now, but uh, a lot a lot is still to be determined and I'm not ready to count out Chase Lucas who like you like you all guys said, like a five year starter. The guy's pretty smart. He's pretty instinctive. I don't think he has as much athletic traits as, as some of the other guys on, on the roster, but he's got plenty. So um, I'm intrigued by him. He'll definitely be a he's a, a leader type. You know, one of the interesting things I found out about him was that he went through a coaching change himself at Arizona State. His last coach wouldn't let him wear a do rag inside the training facility, and Herm Edwards is just like, "Yeah, of course you can. What 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 are we doing here?" I'm pretty sure was was it Todd Graham was the previous Maybe. coach at Arizona State, which makes a lot of sense. Yeah, if anyone's followed Todd Graham's job after that at Hawaii and what happened at yeah. hawaii what kind of an asshole todd grab is right. so that yeah, all tracks <laughs> he's, he's had his own matt patricia to uh uh dan campbell experience and he's, he's like another quote I, I found from his coach was like he would get on his teammates if they weren't spending enough time in the film room so a a leader by by traits and and, and that goes for a lot of people you know this this guy was a two time two or three time captain seems like just basically about everyone they drafted was a captain. So again, culture very much important in this draft class. And I can't imagine that changing anytime soon. We did We're it. We're done. We did. We did it. Want to at least give one name maybe for UDFAs or you no. just want to tap out? Not at all. I don't know. I'm sorry. I don't know the UDFA class yet. I'm sorry, chat. We'll get to it. Maybe down the line. They're not even official yet. No, no, no one has officially signed. So, Corey Sutton, deep balls, baby. Um, do you do you do you want to give a grade? Do we want to close it out with grades, or some sort of analysis, or an emoji? <laughs> I like the idea. I, I wasn't planning for this, but I do like the idea of an emoji. Now, I was gonna say that was big Tim Robinson energy in the hot dog sketch. <laughs> Send an emoji. <laughs> what do we do? Send each other emojis. <laughs> Uh, are we grading on an A to C scale like every other <laughs> draft grade article? Like Chad Reuter from NFL.com who gave everyone but four teams B minuses or higher? Apparently, yeah. I did see someone give out an F plus to one team. Uh, that might have been John McClain, um, who's kind of a shit talker. Uh, I mean, if we're doing A to C, I almost feel like you got to throw an S plus in there. Just keep it with like <laughs> Japanese, like JRPGs. Um I don't know. I'll do full grades. I, I think I think if we're doing A to F, I'm giving this about like a B. No explanation needed. What else? What explanation am I going to give that's <laughs> going to satisfy people? What, what explanation am I going to give? Huh? I, I want to give this draft a B plus, and I think had the Lions not traded up for JMO, I think that I would have been sitting in like B minus kind of territory i i can't stress enough how much i love that move and getting that player so uh i'm, I'm sitting pretty comfortable with the b plus not sure what kind of emoji that is but yeah i mean i i was i was saying i like i might have like smirk one like a... i liked i like the trade up i know jeremy is kind of whatever on it i i liked the trade up i like jameson williams i feel like we're kind of getting a complete look on the on the vision of what the lions want for their players. And that's all I can really be like, all right, in year two of a rebuild, ah! excuse me. in year two of a rebuild, that's all I can really ask is like, all right, here's your strategy. Now let's see if it turns out for anything on the field. The, the one thing I want to say before Jeremy gives his grade is I was thinking about as I, as I was going to bed after day one, the Lions pick at 46. If they somehow walk out with Hutchinson, Hutchinson, Jamison Williams, and Malik Willis at 46, I I don't know 
I don't know if my body would go into shock or what, but like that was the timeline that I was hoping, wishing, and praying for. And then when the Lions <laughs> kind of reached for a player, I was like, oh man, I want to like this guy. <laughs> <laughs> you would have done the entire podcast shirtless. Like there, there's no question. I would have done my entire life shirtless, Jeremy. <laughs> I would have showed up. Christ. I would have showed up to school on Monday. And Fair that's enough. shirtless. Um, <laughs> that you would have gotten fired. Um, I give it a B. Uh, I'm. I'm. I feel like people think I'm down on this class, and I'm not. I'm. I'm very happy for. But but I. I guess I kind of just look at overall. What did they get? They got two potential blue chip players, one on each side of the ball. Great. They got a guy who might not be a starter right away, but will eventually be a starter and immediately give you a lot of reps in Josh Pascal. Great. So far, so good. Kirby Joseph, to me, is a project. I think that's going to take at least a year, maybe two down the line before he's a starter. And I can't say with certainty that he's going to be a good starter. Not great. J- James Mitchell, though, kind of makes up for that because I think that's a really good pick. I think he's a guy that's going to contribute right away and might be have a a significant role on this team. The rest is kind of chalk. When you're talking about day three, I, I like, I like the James Houston pick. I I think that is a guy who, who could surprise and and explode and be one of those guys where it's just like, how, how did people let this guy fall? Um, But we'll see. So when it comes down to it, two bona fide starters, potential blue chippers, one guy who's going to be a starter and then a bunch of kind of role players after that. It's okay. But when they went into this draft with four picks in the top 97, I was hoping with at least three bona fide starters, maybe four, maybe, I'm sorry, they had five picks in the top 97. I was hoping for at least four starters that, that could maybe produce right out of the box. So again, it, it, it goes into my persistent nagging about trading up a little bit, but the fact that you might have two blue chip players gets me excited enough where I'm not going to drag this down three grades or anything like a B is still I'm pretty happy we're done we're done thanks everyone this is one of those weeks where we do uh, a lot of work across the board and I feel like getting a nap you've earned it what like now you're up to what Almost 20 hours of streaming? I, something like that. I <laughs> Everything's blurred together. I think, let's see, four hours now today, checking the clock. Uh, five, four and a half, five and a half. Yeah, no, I'm ready to uh, I'm ready to get some sleep. We'll be back here. Um, when are you starting up the first bite series for all the... Uh, as soon as we can. Even, and we haven't even talked about it yet. Maybe this week. I, I, I think I want to go reverse order. So we might, we might do some uh, Chase Lucas first bite this week if i can if i can wrangle spicy again. spicy all right well we'll do that until then guys see you star side thanks for keeping us with you for pride detroit pod cast uh pride of detroit did its birthday la- this week last week yep 16 last week, 16 yes. Switch 16 and pod cast will be turning seven here very soon give it a few months <laughs>